Okay, let's talk about hydration and nutrition, what I used for Sniper Adventure Challenge in Wyoming. Again, it was a 48-hour adventure race where you started at 6 on Thursday and ended 6, 6 in the evening, and then ended 6, on, uh, six in the evening on Sunday. And basically, the entire time, we were moving with a 30-pound, 30 35-pound ruck and navigating through the mountains of Wyoming, through the hills, and hitting different points and uh, accomplishing different tasks. Pretty hard, I think we covered, we don't know yet, but over 40 miles easily. It was uh, very demanding. And so going into this, I've experimented a lot with super low carb and even keto protocols in my own training and with my own, um, in my own performance. And I've read a lot about endurance, and especially in endurance events, um, being fat adapted is very beneficial. You're able to it, um, you're able to tap into way more fat calories over a long period of time once you're fat adapted than you are in terms of calories from carbohydrate. And essentially, you need to eat more carb to access those to have carbohydrates to get to rather than fat. There's so many more that you can access. So I did Mammoth Sniper Challenge at the beginning of the year, January, when I ate super low carb, I didn't measure my ketones at the time, so I don't know if I was, I, I was, don't know where my ketone levels were, I was definitely fat adapted, and had a great, uh, great test and experiment out of that match, in eating just meals like this, the next mile meals, and some high fat and protein snacks. Then a few months ago, about a month or two ago, I did a 35 mile fasted ruck so did not eat for 24 hours and did not eat through a uh, 35 mile effort which was also a success and leading up to that I very ate very low carbs and so I eat off and on I eat mostly low carb sometimes I'm in ketosis sometimes I'm playing around sometimes I back out I, I dive in and dive out in the beginning of this experiment Years ago, I went all in for months and became very fat adapted, and since then, play around and dive in and dive out. For this match, same thing, I rucked a lot and experimental, experimented with uh, going super low carb for extended periods of time, and then um, introduced some carbs, and then low carb, back and forth. Two weeks leading up to the race, super low carb, and then a few days before the race, I even did a 24 hour fast uh, just to see where I was in terms of being in ketosis and I was definitely in ketosis. And then uh, super clean that whole period, no carbs or very minimal carbs. And then started the race off on um, Thursday night at 6 p.m. And in my pack, I took two mile high meals and two snack packs. And so I made multiple snack packs and in each snack pack, I had a fat source, in this case, a Justin's almond butter, and a protein source. And in this case, it was just a little beef jerky packet. In other ones, I had a, I had a Froning Bison Biltong um, pack. In this one, I had avocado, dried uh, freeze-dried avocado, and a beef stick. In some, in one, or in a couple, I even had the almond butter. I had the almond butter in a lot of the snack packs and skipjack wild tuna. Um, that I'll talk about that in a second. And so those are the different meal items I packed. And when I took off, because again, in this race, every 12 hours, so we'd return to the start where we'd have a cache bag and you could replenish food. I put a lot of food in the replenish bags and took minimal amounts of food uh, with me, two of those and two of these. Started at six, it probably wasn't until 11 or 12 till I had my first snack. And so I wasn't hungry, but I decided to eat a snack of almond butter and beef jerky. Um, took that down, it was fine. Then probably around morning when we returned back to camp, um, decided to have another little snack, nothing too crazy. And I was not feeling hungry and we were moving, continually moving and I was felt fine in terms of nutrition and performing well. Went through the day and I had another snack um, probably midday or so 
at one point I did have the tuna as one of the snacks. And again, every time I had the snack, it was the fat source and the protein. I had the tuna at one point and I um, did not like that. I didn't even finish it. That was a bad idea. And actually even the almond butter, I had to, whenever I'd eat one, I had to drink a lot of water to chase it down, but it was still, it was serving its point because the almond butter, it's um, had 220 calories and total fat, let's see, 19 grams of fat. So these were great, especially when you think that I'm fueling essentially off of fat. So those were great. I tried to have the almond butter and the jerky at the same time and just slowly consume them both. Um, it wasn't so, and through, so then I had about the third snack around midday on the second day, on the first full day, so before the 24 hour mark. Hit the 24 hour mark, came back to camp, and it wasn't around the 24 hour mark that I decided, well, I'm not even that hungry, but maybe just to keep fueling the effort, I'll have a meal. So I had one next mile meal. Ate that, felt good. Um, we didn't take any stove, so this, and this one has 510, actually, yeah, coconut chicken is what I had. It's 510 calories, 29 grams of fat. This one has 13 grams of carbs. This was definitely the most carbs I had in any single meal, and 52 grams of protein. I um, ate that, that was uh, 24 hours into the race, and then continued on, and about 12 hours later, had another single snack. And that was around six in the morning or so. So we had about 12 hours left, left in the race. And that actually was the last thing I ate for the rest of the 12 hours. Um, I didn't eat another, I didn't feel hungry. I didn't feel like I needed, I was bonking. I didn't feel like I needed the energy. I just felt like focused and good and I was able to move. And actually, arguably, uh, my partner would say in the first half, I was a little slow, uh, just keeping up with him, but that was um, some equipment issues, shoe issues, I think. But in the last half of the race, there were multiple instances where I was running long duration to get to points and just pushing hard and um, completely not hungry and completely performing well on a super low carb diet. And at the end of the race, and this is interesting, this is, it's funny because I was looking at Michael Easter, a video he posted the other day on his account, and he's a good friend. He did a story on me a number of years ago. He was talking about how much food to take out in the field. And he said, if you're 150 pounds or less, take 2,500 calories. And, and let me say this, me, uh, we differ, we're on the different spectrums of how to eat. And I've even chatted to him about this. He's over here and I'm over here, how to eat for these type of efforts. And so he, um, in this video he posted, he said, 20, if you're 150 pounds or less, 25 cal 2,500 calories is what you need to take out in the field with you. If you're 150 pounds or more, 3,000 calories. So for this effort, he would have basically said, take 6,000 calories. And if he knew how much, if he knew that we were up for 48 hours straight, covering 40, 50 miles, he probably would have even said more. Um, at the end of the match, when I did the math, on what I ate, I ate 1,600 calories over the course of 48 hours. So you could say um, 800 calories a day, although the last 12 hours I didn't have um, anything, and performed completely fine physically and had no issues. Again, though, I don't recommend anyone do this without experimenting on themselves to see if it works well and without actually doing it for extended amounts of time. Um, it worked very well for me, but I'm also able to do this because I, I essentially have the foundation over years of eating low carb and over years of experimenting with diets like this. If I were to do it again in terms of nutrition, I would do exactly the same thing. And in my pack, I probably wouldn't take any of these meals like I did this time. If it was the same sort of format where every 12 hours you can come back to a cache site, and I'd only take one or two of these little snack packs, and I'd completely fuel off of um, fat and uh, basically have some of the protein to rebuild. Um, so very happy with that. Now, in all of that being said, the other super critical thing that I did in this match that I did not do at um, Mammoth Sniper Challenge was electrolyte drink mix, so LMNT. 
electrolyte drink mix, basically sodium replacement. At Mammoth Sniper Challenge um, in January, I didn't take any sodium replacement. And I know from being in this world and from eating like this, whenever you're low carb, you should definitely uh, increase your salt intake. And when we did the 35 mile ruck with Thomas DeLauer, he was a big fan of these and he made us drink these. In that event, I didn't drink enough water. So at the end, I kind of, I don't want to say crashed, but I kind of recovered slowly. I drank a few of these through that event. At this event, I decided, okay, I'm gonna drink a number of these. So what I did was in my pack, I had two liters from my Camelback that was always just pure water. And then in the pack, one liter of water with an element. And so basically every 24 or actually every 12 hours, I would take one of these through a liter of water. And um, the three liters basically last 12 hours. The first section of the race, I drank a lot of water because it was really strenuous and a lot of hiking. We actually had to stop and refill at a, at a location where you could refill water. And then throughout the rest of the race, pretty consistent, drank about the three liters um, in each 12 hour. Towards the end, the last day, some, some uh, individual, you were able to get water at different stations and topped off. But at the end of the day, through this 48 hour race, had about four of these packets that 1000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium. And, um, worked out great. So if you are going to try in an event that in a super low carb or even a ketosis in a state of ketosis and you're eating like this, make sure you have something like LMNT element to replace the sodium needs um, that your body is going to need throughout the race. So we took fourth place out of 18 teams. Um, we we're trying to win, but that wasn't in the cards for this. But the experiment of the nutrition and the experiment of eating this way for me, um, all of these things are experiments in, in trying to eat like this and perform like this, it was a massive success. I'm really happy with how this went down and eating a super low carb um, protocol like this. As soon as the race finished, um, I wasn't even that hungry. They had some food. And again, I hadn't eaten. It ended at 6 um, in p.m. And my last snack was around 6 in the morning. And so the, um, we, I wasn't that hungry. I actually took my finger prick kit to measure my ketone level. My glucose levels were, um, I think, high 60s. And my ketone levels were just over 1. And so pretty cool just to measure those. Since then, I then, so like I said, I go through waves. I finished that and Thomas, I then went to dinner that night and texted Thomas and he said, hey, slowly reintroduce some uh, fruit this week. And I'm like, hey, that's done. Like I've already, I'm already eating bread and like it's, uh, I'll take my time to get, the, I'll go through this little phase where I'm not eating well and then I'll re-enter this phase of cleaning it all up. But for now, I'm just enjoying uh, diving into some some other foods. Okay, thanks for watching. And if you want to try any of this out or try anything like this, hit me up or check out Thomas DeLauer and his, his site and his recommendations because he is really dialed in on how to perform. And finally, just one last thing to note is uh, that potential there, especially for people going out in the field, if you're adapted to significantly reduce your weight and the number of calories you take because your body is adapted to performing with less calories is massive in terms of what you're, what you can do in terms of reducing load and performing at a high level in the field. If you're a through hiker, if you're a climber, if you're in the military, if you're doing a race like this, I saw a lot of guys, even friends of mine eating pizza, eating hamburgers. And, um, someone offered me something. I was like, Nope, I'm good. Oh, and on that one last thing I forgot to say that I should have started with this. Prior to starting the race, right before starting the race, I took a uh, uh, Big Mac with cheese, bacon and cheese, double Big Mac bacon with cheese, and pounded that. But I didn't eat the bun. So I used the bun as a handle, tear pieces of the bun off, and just ate the, um, the burger, the bacon, and the cheese. And that was like moments before starting the race at 6 and Thursday. So that was the 
that was the last thing I had before beginning. And um, just as some last minute pre-calories. And in the 1600 calories count that I said I had during the race, I didn't count the Big Mac. The Big Mac technically was before. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks, bye.